Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And this weird compressor showed up as an advertisement somewhere on my web browser, and I wanted to talk about it. This is the PNH AFC2 Compression Amplifier Tube Compressor, blah, 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 blah. They listed a bunch of other more famous compressors here in the title. That's a typical thing. I won't complain about that. Let's see. It looks like this is made in Lafayette, Indiana by PNH Electronics. So if you wind up buying this compressor, You'll probably want to swap out the electrolytic caps here. The other caps are probably fine. I would also recommend swapping out this two-prong cord for a properly grounded three-prong cord. Now, the AFC2 is not a Veramu, aka remote cutoff compressor, like the Gates Day Level, the Manly Stereo Variable Mu Limiter Compressor, or the Fairchild 660 and 670 Compressor Limiter. And my goodness, $122,900. It's not any of those. The AFC2 is also not an optical compressor like the LA2A or the Manly Voxbox. It has a weird architecture I have not seen anywhere else. So if you've seen this architecture somewhere, please leave a comment below. I found a manual for it that includes schematics at this Boat Anchor Manual Archive. It was in this weird DJVU format, so I had to go hunting around for a program that could read that. If you go to the main Bama website and scroll down quite a bit, you can find a list of applications that will view that kind of file and export it, and I found it here and it seemed to work okay. I downloaded this macOS version, and it didn't seem to blow up my computer. Anyway, here's the manual. And one thing I want to warn you about is that the high and low on the inputs and outputs refer to high and low impedance, not high or low signal level. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, there's a pretty good description of how the circuit operates. Here's a general block diagram. The main thing that's unique about this circuit, from my point of view at least in terms of what I've seen, is this audio compression section, which consists of a very special tube. The high impedance input goes through a standard amplifier stage before hitting that compressing tube, and the low impedance input bypasses that initial stage. There's another amplifier stage after the compression tube, and that's where the feedback is taken that goes through this rectifier here that's used to create the control signal that controls the amount of gain reduction. So the output of that is fed through basically an active filter, and then there's an output stage with a transformer, and the feedback here is pretty much what you would find in a guitar amplifier. So the rest of this is pretty standard. Well, actually, this filter is a little weird. I'll talk about that later. So here's the schematic. This is drawn in an old style that I personally find challenging to read. The B-plus supply for the plates of the tubes is given here, and it's sort of down around where the ground is. I prefer a more modern style where the B-plus is up at the top of the schematic, and load resistors like the R4 here are written above the plate, but your mileage may vary. Let's see, we have capacitive coupling between stages, nothing too surprising there, and we have this initial V1 amplifier stage here, and this is a fairly standard common cathode inverting amplifier. The high input impedance input goes through that, but the low input impedance input bypasses it. V2 is a weird tube. I'll come back to it. The signal input comes into this grid over here through R6, and the control input goes into these grids over here through R12. V3 here forms a standard inverting common cathode amplifier stage, and the output of that is sent two places. It's sent into the filter network to eventually go to the output, but it's also sent this direction in a feedback loop in order to determine the control signal for the compressing tube. So VB3 here is actually wired with the grid hooked to the plate. 
That makes V3b act like a diode. The electrons are flowing from the cathode to the plate. So if we think about in terms of conventional current, we can imagine a diode where we have the conventional current from electrical engineering flowing from the plate to the cathode. This gives us half-wave rectification, and then R12 and C5 form a one-pole low-pass filter that smooths that out before going into the control grid. Now, I'm not really sure what to make about the active filter stage formed by V4A here. At first glance, it looked to me like some sort of weird mutant Solenkey topology, but the Solenkey filter would use a non-inverting amplifier here, whereas here this is an inverting amplifier, so I don't think my intuition on that is right. I would have to think about this more. Anyway, if this filter architecture looks familiar to you, please leave a comment below. The output of that filter is sent to V4B, which drives the output transformer, and there's some feedback taken from the output transformer back to the cathode of V4A. That's a fairly typical thing you'll see to try to linearize this whole setup. How does this sound? I have no idea. The fact that the user manual refers to SSB, aka single sideband, tells me this is designed for something like ham radio applications and was not really designed with musical applications in mind. But who knows, it could be interesting. It might not be your go-to compressor, but folks like Sylvia Massey get a lot of mileage out of weird obscure equipment. It doesn't really have any controls beyond the filter control here and a potentiometer right before the final output tube. So you can really only change how much it compresses by the levels that you're sending into it. I think it would be a really interesting design exercise to try to modify this to give it more flexibility, like variable compression slope, variable attack rate, variable release rate, etc. Anyway, what is up with this tube V2? That's a 7B8. So that has five grids. It has seven main terminals, not including the filament. So that's not a triode or a tetrode or a pentode. That's a heptode. It says it's equivalent to the 6A8GT, so let's look that up. I found this page at www.radiomuseum.org that gives this example diagram. And this is fascinating because this is for a radio. So we have the audio signal coming in to this grid on the left here. And the grids indicated by pins four and five here, that's hooked to this tuning network. And this is forming a oscillator. And so this tube is doing the mixing. And I don't mean mixing in the musical sense of a mixing console where you're adding signals. I mean mixing in the radio sense of multiplying signals together. And if you think about it, that's what we want to do with a voltage-controlled amplifier. You're essentially multiplying the audio signal with a control signal. So this is a radio tube that the compressor is pressing into service for a purely audio application.